Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and their SOFI share price. In this video, we're going to be analyzing a plethora of articles to where the first one is titled, Insider Buying, CEO Anthony Noto Acquires Shares of SoFi Technologies Inc., ticker symbol SOFI, and this is phenomenal news when we see an insider, such as a CEO, buy more shares of the company in which they operate. After that, we're going to be analyzing a negative article titled, Time to Cut Your Losses on SoFi Stock, Why This Former Bull is Waving the White Flag. So we will be analyzing and criticizing this particular bearish perspective, considering that I think he is off in a multiple points that he brings up about SoFi Technologies, and I think him selling SoFi Technologies is unjustified right now. After that, we're going to be talking about the latest price targets from analysts from multiple different firms, and then lastly, we're going to talk about how high their share price could go over the next 12 months. So if you want more videos just like this one on SoFi Technologies, go and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, and with that being said, let's get right into it. If you didn't know, SoFi Technologies is a fintech company, or a financial technology company that essentially operates as a digital bank. And recently, the company got great news, which is lifting their share price by over 3% right now, because an insider, such as their CEO, Anthony Noto, has recently purchased more stock in this company, which is great news. It's amazing when a CEO ends up purchasing more shares in the company that they operate because this adds to the bullish thesis and the positivity that surrounds this company. When insiders buy a company, it's normally because they believe that the future share price of the stock will be higher than what they bought it for. Now, there are a multitude of reasons for insiders to sell various stock in the company in which they operate. However, normally there's only one reason why they would buy into the company, and that's because they believe that the long-term growth trajectory of this company is very positive. So this should really excite investors right now. And that's exactly what we are seeing right now because the CEO of SoFi Technologies recently purchased 28,775 shares of the company according to the most recent SEC filing. But this is not the only time that the CEO has been purchasing shares within the company that he operates. As an example, this recent transaction which has increased the total number of this insider's total purchases to where over the past year he has bought around 203,275 shares of SoFi stock which is phenomenal news. The most recent transaction occurred at a share price of around $6.90, which would value his overall purchase at almost $200,000. However, you should be aware that SoFi over the past year has seen 5 insiders buying into their overall stock and 10 insiders selling. But now let's talk about why specifically their CEO is buying more stock right now at its current price point of approximately $7. Well, the reason why I think he's buying shares right now is because technically the company is undervalued a according to their future growth prospects, and here's what I mean. According to the GF value of SoFi Technologies, the intrinsic value of their stock should be around $8.09 per share, which means buying this company below $8.09 per share is a great thing to do right now. If you're not familiar with the GF value, it is calculated on their historic accounting ratios, such as their price-to-earnings ratio, their price-to-sales ratio, their price-to-book ratio, and their price-to-free cash flow ratio. These ratios are then adjusted for the company's past performance and expected future business outcomes. And ultimately, we get an intrinsic value according to the GF value of $8.09 per share, which is why I believe that the CEO is buying the company right now because he believes it's undervalued, and that means there's going to be a lot of upside in this company over not only the next 12 months, but also the next few years. So if you are a long-term investor, right now may be a good time to buy SoFi shares, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Yet despite the CEO buying more shares of SoFi stock, we do see some other investors waving the white flag and selling their SoFi shares. So let's talk about why that is, and I will analyze whether or not I think this is justified or not. The author of the article starts off by saying that he was wrong about SoFi Technologies' SOFI stock, and he says that after three years of holding the stock, he has officially sold his shares at a loss. He goes on to say that the stock currently sells for around $7 per share, so if you got in a year ago when it traded at $5, you are in great shape right now. You should also be aware that we actually reported on this company when their stock was trading at around $5 per share, and that's when I started to buy into this company. However, he says even if you bought in at $5 per share, even though you're sitting pretty right now, he would still recommend that you sell this company. So let's take a look at his evidence. The author goes on to talk about how SoFi has evolved into a consumer bank to where their main business is their lending business, to where they take deposits, they make loans for 
houses for education, and even other life expenses. He also goes on to highlight how SoFi is rapidly growing their revenues. As an example, originally, they were bringing in less than $1 billion, and then that jumped in 2022 up to $1.57 billion, and then that $1.57 jumped to around $2.1 billion. And in my view, that is very good news. He then dives into SoFi's competition, which would be companies like Robinhood Markets, because SoFi is not only a bank or a fintech company, but they also operate as their own brokerage. If you're not familiar, Robinhood Markets is also a brokerage firm, and their CEO actually talks about how excited he is for SoFi Technologies specific brokerage, and he believes that they could be a 10-bagger delivering a 10-for-1 return to investors, which is absolutely insane, but in a good way. However, here is where the author's criticisms start. He says that SoFi is taking on low-quality credits from people who are likely to default on their loans, and this is not going to reflect positively on SoFi, and here's why. He even highlights how SoFi, in a recent report, stated that 4.8% of their loans were in default at the end of March. And this essentially means that people are not paying back on their loans, which they owe to SoFi, which means that SoFi has to float the bill for this. He also criticizes SoFi's acquisition of Wyndham Capital last year when it really wanted to get into home loans. And he says that they haven't expanded on that niche ever since. However, let me push back on both of these criticisms. First, you should be aware that SoFi originally targeted young high earners with a very high net worth. This allowed SoFi to build out a very fundamentally strong base for their lending business. And now they can take on some additional risk by lending to lower net worth individuals. So even if all of the lower net worth individuals decided to default on their loans, their very strong fundamental base of young high earners who have an extraordinarily high net worth for their age could support this company despite the lower net worth individuals defaulting on their loans. So I really don't see this as a big risk for SoFi Technologies. Secondly, let's talk about SoFi's acquisition of Wyndham Capital. And if you didn't know, SoFi bought Wyndham Capital so they could further integrate themselves into the home home mortgage business. This acquisition allowed SoFi to give lower interest rates to borrowers, and this ended up causing more demand for this particular segment of their lending business. So ultimately, this acquisition did exactly what SoFi wanted them to. There's no reason to build out or expand on this acquisition in any way because it's already doing its job. So to say that SoFi hasn't expanded on this particular niche is just one, not true, and two, it's unneeded and unnecessary because this acquisition already has done exactly what SoFi wanted it to do. Therefore, I don't think that either of these reasons justify selling SoFi stock. The author then ends the article by saying, in the present economic cycle, it's just not a great investment right now, and he believes that there are going to be future obstacles for SoFi stock. And before we start getting into the price targets for this company, let me address this. If you can find a fundamentally strong company like SoFi Technologies, and their share price is temporarily depressed because of the current macroeconomic cycles right now due to the economy, then right Right now could be the best time to invest into that company because over the long term they will regain the value that they've lost and even add some. Therefore I don't think this author has good reasons to sell SoFi stock right now and I do believe that his current position is rather short-sighted. But now let's talk about some price targets for this company and remember the company is currently trading for around $7 per share. I'm going to start off talking about the lowest price target that I could find and that comes from Wed Bush which currently gives this company a $3 price target. But don't let that dissuade you from investing into this company because a Needham analyst believes that SoFi stock could surge up to $10 per share over the next 12 months. Likewise, a Deutsche Bank analyst recently lowered their price target from $12 down to $11, but still, $11 is substantially higher than their current share price of around $7 per share. So buying this company right now may be a good investment opportunity, but always make sure to do your own research. I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, investors' price targets should only be used as a guide and not necessarily what the company will be worth over the next 12 months. These are guesstimates based off of a plethora of various models that are used to calculate a share's current value and their future share price over the next 12 months. So with that being said, how high could SoFi stock actually go over the next year? Well, let's talk about it. Right now, SoFi Technologies is adding a lot of new customers, they are growing their revenues, and the future of this company looks rather bright in my opinion. The reason I say that is because SoFi is branching out of its core business and they are diversifying their overall revenue streams so they don't have to rely on their lending business so much. 
On top of that, we even see that their lending business is bouncing back, and we see positive trends going forward in the macroeconomic economy. It's also only a matter of time before the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates, which is going to act as a positive catalyst for growth stocks and finance stocks. The company has also given us various forecasts, outlooks, and projections for what this company could bring in over the next year. And they said that their adjusted net revenues are going to increase by around 15% for the year of 2024, up to around $2.4 billion, with their net income coming in at around $170 million, which is rather good news. You should also be aware that both of these metrics actually represent increases from their last update, which means that this company is growing faster than management actually anticipated. However, there is some bad news, because according to the article, despite SoFi Technologies' excellent performance, their share price plunged by 10% after the company released their most recent earnings results. Essentially, Wall Street analysts didn't like how the company was slowing down in their revenue growth projections for the second quarter. According to the report, SoFi Technologies was projected to bring in around $581 million. However, the company actually said that their newest projection is that they will only bring in $560 million, which is not good news. However, it does get worse because their net income was guided to be around $13 million, but now it's only around $7.5 million for their current projections. But we have to remember that this is only a short-term problem, and I actually think that they are going to beat these expectations. In my opinion, SoFi Technologies will have a rather rough second quarter in regards to the company and their share price. But there is good news here, because once they bring in their second quarter results, if those results are anything like their first quarter results, SoFi will blow past all of these expectations, thus surprising investors and analysts, and this ultimately will lift their share price higher. But even if I'm wrong about that, I think investors should focus on the long-term trends of this company and not necessarily this short-term volatility in regards to the next quarter. The article then ends by saying that SoFi Technologies is an incredible buying opportunity for investors right now, and they also say that it's smart for investors to buy into the company right now during this time of volatility in the second quarter, because beyond the second quarter, things look very bright for SoFi Technologies. Therefore, during the second quarter, this could give investors a good buying opportunity because after the second quarter, the company is anticipated to do very well according to their future projections. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about SoFi stock and whether or not you personally own it in your portfolio. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.